Welcome everybody, my name is Rob Howlett. I'm the Regional Development Officer for the South West. Welcome to this first in a series of sessions about club development. This evening we're going to be focusing on financial planning and how in these really tricky times it could be crucial for your club to review or adjust its financial planning. To help me investigate this we've got two guests joining us. First we've got Joe Burney who's a chartered accountant, member of two sailing clubs in Chichester Harbour, chairman of a boatyard, trustee and treasurer of the Alan MacArthur Council Trust and a member of the RWA's participation and membership. Welcome Joe. Hi Rob, thank you. Also joining us we've got Alistair Dixon, Director of Sport Development from the RWA. He's also a member of Gurnard Sailing Club. Welcome Alistair, thanks again for joining us as well. Thanks Rob. So Alistair, we can presume that most clubs have already got some financial planning and taken steps towards financial planning. Why is it so important in this national crisis for them to review their financial planning? Yeah, well, I think clubs will all have, you know, kind of existing income and expenditure budgets and forecasts. Uh, uh, and that's really important and that's really good. Uh, but they're unlikely to reflect the situation that they're now living in. So it's really important that club, clubs assemble a sort of expert group who know the budget really well to sort of get together and look at both income and expenditure and really understand what's going to be impacted both currently and going forward as this situation unfolds. Yeah, that's right. It's going to be hard, isn't it? Um, and, and I think, as, as you say, it's really crucial for them to, to review it. Um, if we think about their income to start with, a club understanding its income is, is key. Clubs around the country are bound to have huge different types of income streams because we deal with so many different types of saving clubs. Um, some will have some in common though, won't they? They're going to have membership fees, subs, fundraisers, donations. Um, a lot of those will be generic to all clubs. Other clubs might be doing things with kit sales, sponsorship, uh, grant funding. Um, or they may be generating income through commercial activities and courses, especially those with RTCs. There'll also be clubs working with facility hire and catering, and those clubs will be working um, both on a bookings basis, but also on their weekly facility hire and catering from their members. Joe, can you tell us why in this emergency situation, those clubs really need to have a tight grasp on what their regular and their ad hoc income is? Okay, thanks, Rob. Yeah, before I answer that, I suppose I would say that uh, now is the most important time ever to be talking to the people in your club who know about the finances. So whether that's your bookkeeper, or if you're lucky enough to have an honorary treasurer, or whatever else it is you go to for financials, you usually probably only talk to him once a year, or her once a year when the accounts need to be done. But now's the important time to get close to them. As an accountant, I'd say it's always important for all businesses to be very clear about their sources of income. But in an emergency situation like we find ourselves in today, it's even more important. If you don't understand where your income's coming from and the impact on those income sources of being forced to stop your activities and events uh, for an uncertain period of time, then you're going to be in trouble. As with expenditure forecasts, I recommend you work out your expected income over the next two or three months, say. Of course, the problem is that no one knows how long the current lockdown is going to last. But let's start off being with a short time frame, like the next three months. Um, uh, as part of your planning, I suggest you determine how much of that income is 100% rock solid, definitely will come in. What's at risk? And then what will de definitely be lost? It's a good starting point. Um, if you have an income forecast already prepared, I know a lot of uh, clubs do, the clubs I work with certainly do. And that's a great starting point although obviously it was based on a happy period when everything was going to plan. So you're gonna to have to change a bit now. Uh, you might look at your bank statements as well, check where you are with your cash. Um, if you've got a booking system, look at bookings for the future uh, and any other sources of uh, income that might be available. Uh, if you can list all those uh, income sources out, categorize them into what's at secure, what's, what's at risk and what's lost. That will help you understand how much your income will keep your operations going during this period. So when reviewing each source, consider testing whether activities and events could be rearranged. I know one of the clubs I'm a member of has just done a survey to ask people about their, their thoughts and ideas about what might happen when uh, COVID-19 restrictions are, are um, removed. 
or, or at least reduced. Um, it's also a good time to, to talk to members about their membership fees and subscriptions. If you're lucky enough to be a, a club or a, a, an organization where those are charged up front, they're in the bank. But if they're being paid by installments, I know some clubs are talking to members and explaining the importance of continuing to pay those installments. Um, so perhaps um, you, you, you're pretty secure on your subscriptions, but your event income's not looking good. Certainly the clubs I'm a member of, uh, I'm sure it applies to all clubs that they've had to cancel the events for April. They're pretty much certain they're gonna cancel for May. Maybe in June it'll open up again. So there's some unknowns around this, aren't there? Because as we open up, who knows quite how that will happen. Maybe there'll be a steep increase in activity or there may be a reluctance to socially mingle, in which case uh, that, that income may not be as good as you hoped. All those sort of things I'd expect you to be considering when you look at uh, your, your plan for the next few months. Yeah, thanks, Joe. And I think as well, like you say, there may be one person in charge of this in the club, but it's well worth club members and committee members getting together on conference calls just to make sure that they're not missing any income that they were planning on having that may not may not appear or any potential ideas for generating some more income so yeah keeping in touch with all of the committee members in this time is, is key with that isn't it yeah yeah Robert absolutely I've probably done more teleconferencing calls in the last few weeks than, than I've ever done I'm, I'm sure a lot of other people have as well but actually it's been really good to get to get all the club officers um, talking more regularly. Yeah, great. So, I mean, that's that's income. Alistair, some clubs are gonna be lucky enough to have uh, some reserves or some savings. Can you explain how club savings may affect their financial planning for us? Yeah, so I guess um, savings is all, all about, you know, kind of freeing up cash in emergencies like this. So some clubs may have savings in a very accessible form so kind of petty cash on site or cash in the bank that they can free up instantly and it's important that a club understands how much uh, uh, money they can free up but others uh, uh, pots of money might be less accessible so it might be savings accounts investments or money that's earmarked for other known future ex expenditure so uh, you could sort of label those pots of money into restricted and unrestricted uh, and with regards to the restricted, you know, it's about investigating, especially with investments, you know, how long it's going to take uh, to free some of that up. That's all going to be critical uh, going forward for a club to understand, just in case it needs to dig in to some of that. Yeah, and there will, of course, be some clubs not in that lucky position, and we'll come on to how to maybe generate some additional income later. But as you say, they, they do need to work out which is which is accessible and which isn't. So we've talked about the good bits, the income, the savings. How about a club's expenditure? Alistair, what tips have you got for clubs about expenditure? Yeah, so again, it's about, you know, in the first instance, a club really getting into detail, you know, looking in the past history and, and going into the direct debits uh, and another expenditure uh, channels, just understanding where that, that money's going. So it might be looking at club accounts, bank statements, you know, the documentation that they'll have, speaking to treasurers and such like, uh, and then working forward, just seeing essential, uh, what's not essential, uh, what has to be paid, you know, maybe some stuff can be deferred, or, or, or some things for a longer period. It may be a case, you know, if you're speaking uh, to landlords and similar, that you could negotiate uh, on, on differing rates or similar to, to help, you know, keep your expenditure as manageable as possible. Yeah, and I know through the southwest we've seen a few clubs who've been successful with that negotiation over rent. So you're absolutely right there. Um, so a lot of clubs will be used to comparing their income against their expenditure. It's a fairly regular situation. But Joe, once a club is totally in the picture now with their reviewed income and expenditure, uh, what do you think they need to do with this information to help them get through this crisis? Well, yeah, well, uh, well hopefully they're be better informed than they've been for a long time. Um, certainly the clubs I'm involved with, it's, it's not something you have to do sort of on a regular basis, except when you have an emergency like this. So uh, having having collated all that information, um, I'm a great believer in a spreadsheet. 
sit it down in a spreadsheet and see if everybody can, understands it. If they all agree, it's usually a team of you. So that, does it all fit together? Everything you, you've learned about your income and about your, as Alistair says, about your cost savings and what, what you might be able to do. And then I think there's a matter of applying a bit of sensitivity analysis. So, you know, can you actually reduce non-essential expenditure as much as you hoped? Um, can you generate some additional funds? Um, so play around with that a bit and see, see, see the, the um, impact it has on the, the outturn over the next few months. Uh, for example, what would happen if the actual income went even further down and projected expenditure went up? Um, or optimistically, you've actually had a really good go at expenditure and surprise yourself and cut it really well. And maybe you've created a few fun events that you can you can do. Online sailing seems to be working quite well. I don't know whether we've worked out how to charge for it yet, but uh, you never know. Someone might come up with a, a, some, some way of doing that. So it, with all this, though, timing's key, because if your expenditure goes out before your income comes in, then, then that's where you're going to have a pinch point on your, your bank balances. Uh, so I really, really understand the timing. and I, I keep it under review as regularly as you can. I mean, weekly sort of comes to mind. Everybody's stuck at home, well, most of us are stuck at home, so you've got a little bit more time maybe to do that. Um, if, if you can, I think um, you can always try and encourage people who owe you money to maybe pay you a bit quicker than they normally would. Um, so that, that's one possibility. Uh, certainly uh, with outgoings, um, you, know, you can talk about uh, some of the bigger outgoings. Um, you know, may, maybe landlords, if you've got a landlord, maybe he'll do you a deal. He doesn't want you to go under, so you can do a deal with him and defer your rent payments for the next few months. Um, similarly with banks, talking to a bank is always a good idea if, if it, things are getting a bit tight. Um, they sort of all understand at the moment that there's a, there's a short-term crisis, which hopefully will rectify itself eventually, so they're usually willing to talk to you. Um, and, and I just think be, be creative, you know, talk to people about collecting money quicker and, and paying it slow if you possibly can. Yeah, uh, thanks. And I think that creativeness leads us on really well to generating additional revenue that, through streams that might not normally uh, be be an income stream for the club. And Alistair, have you got any kind of ideas uh, on options for clubs to generate extra revenue? Yeah, well, as we know, Rob, uh, sailing boats and clubs are nothing if not resourceful. And, and we've been seeing a huge amount of innovative ideas and ways that clubs that are generating revenue and, and and I'm sure there's a lot that we haven't heard about yet that we'd really like to hear but um, I, I guess the main ones the, the, the you know in the first instance is looking at the membership the membership for a lot of clubs is likely to be the main income generator so it's firstly about clubs speaking to the membership making sure the membership understand you know what's going on but also the impl implications if they all just left uh, the club and the fact that there would be a club for them to come back to so it, it's about the club reminding them about that um there may be a case that they could ask for a payment of, of subscriptions forward, uh, just to help the, the, the group through this time um but then some clubs actually are saying they will give you the three months or two months uh, for free and they're sort of balancing you know the long term uh, income against the sort of short term loss if you like so they're just tr really trying to keep their membership uh, and ensure that their membership don't leak uh, they're not using the club currently so that's that's one uh, approach clubs are using others are using you know sort of learning training systems, you know doing doing stuff more digitally as, as joe was saying uh, others are just really working on engaging the membership so it might be the case of doing you know virtual sailing it might be the, the case of doing online quizzes and other activities them are actually opening up virtual files weekends and selling virtual drinks i'm pretty sure how that works that's to be working for some uh, others are getting secure securing loans from members or, or creating lotteries uh online lotteries for club members some might be doing sub seminars or seminars to get the experienced members and and the fleet reps and the, and the and the sort of class champions if you like to, 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 to give use their knowledge to sort of generate a little bit of income uh for the club um so yeah there's a huge number of ways that 
for generating income. But of course, there's also the external support. So we, the RWA, have been doing what we can to really help interpret the, the government support, um, which there is a huge amount of, you know, be it business rates relief, want grants for clubs that apply through either the Paul Business Grant, Retail Hospitality or Leisure Grant Fund, uh, or even a furlough grant. So if, if clubs have staff, um, they can use that to help balance their costs. Um, but also the Sport England Community Emergency Fund, so that's £20 million that's recently been launched by Sport England. The application uh, we've put out a webinar and uh, some more guidance of, of how clubs and, and other groups like saleability groups can, can apply for that. So that money is freely available now, uh, and it's really important that clubs understand what supports out there. Uh, and that they make the most of that now. Uh, yeah, I agree, Alistair. And it's really important that clubs keep up to date with these funding opportunities. Um, there is a Funding Friday uh, broadcast that's going on at the moment. So if clubs tap into that Funding Friday broadcast, there will be lots of ideas. Um, and also any new pots of money will be talked about during those broadcasts. Uh, equally, you need to ensure that your club or yourself are signed up to club rooms and you're getting all of the most up-to-date information about any funding that is available for your club and you'll also be able to see on there how other clubs have accessed uh, any funds and that might enable you to uh, rethink your strategy um, so yeah please please do do that and if you've got any questions as well it's really important to contact your regional development officer uh, everybody is still working, uh, albeit from home. We're working already to try and help and assist the clubs who are looking for funding uh, and searching for those ways to generate some extra income. So we do want to know what you're trying to do and whether you've got any really good success stories or just share your failings as well, because that's helpful for us to, to help other clubs. So we, we, there must be some other things to think about. Joe, from your previous experience, are there any kind of additional financial elements that clubs should be reviewing and tidying up? Well, yeah, from my previous experience, I, I was thinking about this earlier today that uh, I've lived through three recessions and um, this is this is so completely different. It's come on so quickly and it's given us very little notice to plan for it. So um, I, I'm going to emphasize again what Alistair said about government support schemes. I mean, these are coming incredibly quickly and I think we're learning daily about them. Um, Alistair sort of gave a, gave a quick overview and there's certainly a lot of information available out there on the RYA site. Uh, from, from the RWE legal team and from the RDOs and I can't tell you enough to, to chase all those up. Some of them are supposed to come to you automatically from your local authority if you're the business rates payer, but in my experience they don't always come to contact you, partly because the leisure scheme ones, um, are, are, it's pretty brand new to identify who qualifies for those because uh, they, they were tagged on to some of the retail schemes. So local authorities know about retailers, they're not quite so clear on who's in the leisure sector. So you've got to go and chase them down. Um, the, the other thing I suppose is that, um, you know, if, if, if it is you know, you're under pressure and you're under hardship at the moment, I think it's always worth checking your club constitution and articles of association to determine, you know, what could happen in the worst case. It's good to know, it's, it's not a nice thing to have to check, but I think it, it sometimes you might surprise yourself to see that actually your, your club's in good shape and someone has written a constitution which deals with these sort of crises. But uh, I, I would certainly find somebody in your club to look at it and give you some advice on it. Um, and, uh, and I think finally, you know, um, keep going. It's, um, you know, it's tough times and, and all your members are suffering as well, as well as the clubs. But uh, let, let's, let's be positive about this. There's some good things we've talked about in this session today, which uh, should carry us through. And unlike a recession, uh, I am still optimistic that it won't go on for a year in its current form. It will certainly be difficult as we, we come out of it. No one knows. But I think it's uh, you know, let's be positive about it and, uh, and uh, keep going for the next few months. And uh, let's hope we have a summer of sailing. Thank you. Yeah, I completely agree. Let's hope so. Well, on, on that positive note, Joe and Alistair, thanks so much for your input today. Uh, been really valuable. I found it interesting and I hope everybody watching has. Uh, please remember, if you've got questions about this and you'd like any help on this or other development issues, just contact your RDO directly uh, and they will do their best to get back with some, some solid answers for you so that you can 
help your club through these really difficult times. Next Thursday, we're going to be looking at keeping your members engaged whilst they can't visit the club uh, and how to improve or continue the community spirit that you have uh, and manage that during lockdown. Uh, until then, stay safe and thanks very much, everybody.